So you have something that you want the 3D model, but you've never done any sort of 3D modeling before. Well, the best program I feel to get started with is Tinkercad. Tinkercad is free to use, it's simple, but it's capable of a great degree of robustness. It's, it's no slouch when it comes to getting stuff done, and I'm, I'm pretty good at using it. Now, like I said in my What Are You Going to 3D Print Next video, yes, it's a little bit more limited than other programs. You might hit those limitations and feel like, oh, okay, I need to move on, but that's probably going to be fairly far out there. I know people who have started in Tinkercad and years later are still just using Tinkercad because it's capable of such a degree of robustness. Now, what's going to follow here is a project that I like to show people to give them an idea of the basic concepts of Tinkercad, the, the basic ideas you need to know. But you kind of don't need that. All you need to do is go and sign up for an account and Tinkercad has tutorials in it. And, and I do recommend that you run through those tutorials. But if you'd like to get an idea for how to start it, let's let's jump over to Tinkercad. So here we go. Tinkercad's up and running. All you have to do is go to tinkercad.com. And while it is a website, it is also a web app, which means you use the program here. You don't have to download anything to your computer. And that's cool because if you then take your login, which you will create by clicking the Join Now button right there, and log into it here at the Makerspace, then your designs and your ideas will follow you here and you can just download them. So that's, that's really cool. Now I'm not going to do the Join Now button. I'm going to sign in because I already have an account. So that's my login and password. And this is the main screen of Tinkercad. And on this screen, you can see all the various projects. I, I use Tinkercad for a lot of things. But uh, we're going to create a new design today and open up to the main Tinkercad editor. So here's the editor. Right here at the top is the name of the project. And this is going to be an introduction name tag. Okay. This is the 3D view here, and you navigate this 3D view the same as you do in Cura. Right mouse click and drag rotates the view, zoom in with the mouse wheel, click and zoom to pan your view. That is, instead of rotating it around, you're keeping the, the rotation steady and moving the location of your, of your camera, of your head, as it were. Now, another cool thing about Tinkercad that I wish that more programs did is right over here on the side, they have a little square that you can click on and jump straight to the top or jump straight to the edge or do a, a corner view that's just perfect. You can home it back to its original view. You can, let's, let's bring in just a simple, simple sphere here to talk about, and let's put it off to the side, and you can use this button to focus your view on whatever you selected. You can zoom out from there. This button here is for orthographic or uh, orthographic or perspective view. Now it doesn't look very different with a with a sphere, so I'll bring in a cube. Let's look at this cube. This is perspective view. This is the way we're used to seeing things. Things in the distance are smaller, so I'll just take in a second box and put it back here. And, See how that box looks smaller, even though in reality they're the same size? Well, with orthographic view, things in the distance are the same size as things in the foreground. And that's useful for, like, lining things up exactly, because you want everything to line up. It's not the way our eyes work, but it, it can be useful to know that that's there. We're going to stay working in, in perspective view, but I'm going to take this cube that I dragged in from over here. Uh, over here is the, the objects panel over here, and across there's a menu panel right here that we'll talk about in just a bit, but these, this objects panel gives you all of, the, all of the basic objects that you can work with. Everything in Tinkercad starts as a basic object, but there are lots of categories. There's the basic shapes that we were looking at, there's text and numbers, characters, connectors. I, I really enjoy down here the shape generators. I sometimes browse through those a lot. And I recommend you check these out, but today's project is going to take place with just basic shapes. And the first basic shape is going to be a cube. I just took that from here, drug it onto here, and there it is. Now notice this cube has handles that we can manipulate it with. We can make it shorter. We can make it wider. We can make it narrower. 
we can change the shape of this to be whatever we want. Now that's the beginning of my name tag. I'm also going to bring in a cylinder and it's also going to need to be shorter. And yeah, there we go. I kind of like how it sticks out a little bit. It looks a little bit like a key this way. Now with a, a name tag with a, a what we want to do, I want to punch a hole in that so I can use it on my on my keychain and so I need a hole. Now they actually create some hole objects here, a box or a cylinder hole object for you but I'm going to get creative. I'm gonna look around here. Do I want to, let's see, what other objects could I do? I could do a heart shape, I could do a star shape. Uh, I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna do a heart shape hole today. Okay, now I'm gonna make this smaller but oh I don't, I don't want it to get too narrow or too thin so how do I keep it so it's always the same? Well let's, let's undo, you can always undo if you hold down the shift key while you click and drag one of these handles, it scales it proportionally, which means it scales all of the dimensions at the same time. Now up here, you can choose the shape's color. You can make it whatever color you want. Now that color doesn't matter in the 3D print if you're using just a single nozzle because it's going to be whatever color you load up. But you can, you can distinguish things by color in here, or you can make it a hole. Now this isn't really a hole, is it? It's just a it's just a shadow on your object. Well, that's and you can take it and move it around, but it's not it's not technically a hole. A hole does not extend above a thing, okay? But we can make it into a hole, and this is the first major concept of Tinkercad that I want you to get. Select all of the objects. I've now selected the box, the cylinder, and our heart-shaped hole and use this button right here called group. Click it. And now the, the square, the cylinder, and the heart have all become one object and the hole has become a hole and it is now a solid object, okay? I think that's pretty cool. So now that I've got the basic shape for my keychain, I'm going to come up here, grab a text object. I'm going to put this into my scene. It's a little bit big, so I'm going to use the proportional scale to make it a little bit smaller. And then up here in the properties panel for this object, I have, you know, what is the text of it going to say? It's not going to say text. I said I was going to put my name on here, so here we go. Aha. Uh, I'm going to change the color of this just so that you can see it clearer. But we have a problem. Uh, first of all, that Y is sticking down a little bit too far. Uh, that's better. I don't know. The, the Y could stick out just a little bit. But uh, it's the lettering falling off the side. I grabbed the wrong one here. There we go. I want the name to be only about three millimeters tall. But yeah, the E is falling off the end here. So I need my name tag to be longer. But here's the problem. If I grab this handle and start to manipulate it, do you see what's happening over here to the heart? Do you see it stretching out? I don't, I don't want the heart to stretch out. I just want the, the rectangular part to stretch out. Let's undo that real fast. Well, how could I, I just stretch out the end of that? How could I make that part longer? It, it would be nice if I could, I don't know, go back to the basic objects that I started with. Is that even possible? Well, right here next to the group button is the ungroup button. So I ungroup it, pull it apart. Oops, I've still got them all selected. Let me just select just the square and boom. Now this idea of taking and making holes out of objects, it allows for some very creative objects that we can create. That was not the best way to say that, but let me illustrate what I'm talking about. I'm gonna bring a sphere in, make it very tall, duplicate that sphere. I'm gonna use the duplicate button right here and move it over. I'm just gonna hit the arrow keys to move it over just a little bit and turn that duplicate into a hole. Now let's, uh, center on these objects. If I group them together, what do you think this shape is going to look like? To me, that kind of looks like a bunny rabbit ear. So if I duplicate it, create another one, move it over just a little bit, tilt this one that way, tilt that one that way. And if I need to move them up in the third dimension, there's a little pyramid on top of the object here. You just grab it and move it up. So we can work in three dimensions the way we're supposed to be able to. And then let's 
make this white, group them together, and ta-da, we got our bunny rabbit. However, this creates an interesting question. You remember how the ears were grouped together, and then those ears were grouped with the head. So what happens if I hit the ungroup button now? Is it going to ungroup all the way back to those base objects? Is it going to just explode everything back to the base? Let's find out. I hit the ungroup button, and now the ears, which are also groups, are still groups. It remembers the groupings of groupings. I can now ungroup the ears, and there we're back to the base objects. If, if it had exploded all the way back the way I had worried, it would be bad, because if we tried to regroup them now like this, the head would get these big holes cut out of them, not what we wanted at all. It's important that Tinkercad is capable of remembering that sometimes things are groups of groups. And to remember that, we call that a hierarchy of the groupings of the groupings of the groupings. It, it, it clusters them together. It makes them very good and very useful for that. And so, yeah, that's where Tinkercad's robustness comes from, in that you can build things out of smaller components, and you can, you can build complex components and combine them together. Now, I said, uh, now that you've got an idea of where, where Tinkercad works, I think your, your next step should be go sign up for an account, go through their tutorials, and start playing with it. But once you've done that, the next thing you can do to really catapult your knowledge to the next level and give you an incredible amount of skills is find somebody else who's super talented at Tinkercad and watch them work. And fortunately, there's somebody out there who I can recommend to you. There's a YouTube channel that I'll link to right here called Uni. She's a talented Tinkercad user, a talented maker in general who comes from us from South Korea. I've met her. I think she, I'm a huge fan of her work. And her Eiffel Tower video showed me so much about Tinkercad. And her Star Wars series showed me so much about Tinkercad. So I will link, that link will go directly to the Eiffel Tower video. It's the one I recommend you start with. But then after that, just digest everything she's done about Tinkercad and learn. And by watching her, I guarantee you'll be better. I certainly hope that this has helped you. I hope that this will help you create cool things in the future. And I hope that you will take the things that you create, bring them here to the Makerspace, use our 3D printers and make them real. So I look forward to seeing you at the Makerspace.